Hi, I'm Judy. Welcome to Go Within Yoga. And this little add-on to my Saddle Pose mini masterclass that I did a few weeks ago. So let's pretend that you just woke up, like I'm pretending, no makeup, no jewelry. Um, I'm doing this in bed because I actually found out after I filmed that video that I'm enjoying adding saddle back into my repertoire of poses. And I find that it, for me anyway, it's actually easier to do in bed. It's such a nice soft surface. You can grab a pillow as a bolster. I've got my actual bolster. Okay, so this is gonna be all saddle again. And I'm gonna go over a, thing, a few things that I left out of that mini masterclass, which right about now may appear on the screen above you, um, also at the end. So go ahead and get onto your bed, get onto your map, gather up your props, and begin to transition to your time in bed, on your mat, letting go of anything that came before you stepped onto your mat. Taking your attention to your breath. Always a great idea to center when we transition from one thing to another, and that doesn't mean yoga. That means centering when I get up after I've done this video. Centering maybe when you have finished with a meal and you're moving on to do some work. Just transitions. It's good to come back to yourself when you transition. We're going to start with just a few breaths using the Bhu Mudra. The Bhu Mudra are your pinky and ring fingers curling in to touch your thumb and the other two fingers come out into kind of a peace sign and you can actually plug it right into the ground to ground yourself and if it feels safe and comfortable for you to do so go ahead and close your eyes allow your breath to calm down Notice when your breath calms down, what else in your body or mind calms down. Focus on your body going inside. Do you feel a tingling anywhere in your body? Is energy moving around? No right or wrong answer to that question. Each inhale, feel as though you're plugging more and more into the earth. Each exhale, you're getting rid of things that no longer are serving you. Inhale, plugging into the earth's energy. Exhale, releasing what you don't need back into the earth. A couple more breaths on your own. Begin to feel your forehead relaxing. Allow your jaw to softly open. Shoulders relax. Again, go inward. Notice anywhere else in your body that needs a little extra attention. And perhaps you're going to set an intention for yourself here. We've just come into fall in the northern hemisphere. And it's really nice when we change seasons to spend a little time grounding ourselves before and after that change because it can be really jarring. And let that mudra go. And slowly blink your eyes open. I'd like to begin with the difference between Hero and Thunderbolt pose, which I, I briefly showed in that video. Let me move that bolster a little back. I'm going to turn around. I like to start in Thunderbolt, which is just simply sitting back on your heels like this. So you can see that the heels are coming into the glutes, right? 
and you're sitting up tall, this is how I like to transition into saddle pose. And I take a few breaths here. Now maybe for you, and this is really going to get into your quads and your hip flexors, maybe for you, Thunderbolt feels like a much more comfortable position. In which case, you are sitting between your heels. Notice how your heels are coming into the sides of your glutes. Now for this, for me, it's something I can only spend a little time in right now. I'm getting into a little internal rotation in our hips. That's a good thing because we don't do that a whole lot, but it can feel like a lot. Okay, I'm going to turn this way and I'm going to get back into my thunderbolt position because that's a pose I can sit in comfortably. Now, if you have back problems, if you have knee problems, if you have ankle problems, then saddle may not be the pose for you. In, the, in that case, if you can at least get down on your mat. I mentioned this briefly last week. Now, this is one of my favorite poses. I like this. Now, I mentioned this particular one with Sphinx pose. So here we are in Sphinx pose. Your elbows are bent, and they're under your shoulders, or a little bit in front, and your forearms are on your mat, your bed, wherever you are. And then you bend one knee, reach back, grab around your ankle, and oh, you will feel that in your quad. At least I certainly do. Now, I'm going to suggest, as we begin here, that you go ahead and take your head down either to your hand, one elbow is bent out, the one that's not holding onto your ankle. And you can put your head on that hand if you're on a mat. And I'm just using my pillow, obviously. Hopefully you can still hear me. If you can't reach to this ankle, if this creates a lot of cramping, you can take a strap, which I didn't think to bring with me. But you can just put it around that foot. And the foot comes wherever it comes. Maybe it doesn't come so close to the glutes. And that is perfectly fine. I'm going to take a few breaths here. Relax those glutes. That's not where we want to feel the sensation. That's not where we're aiming to feel sensation. So your hip flexor, your quads, that's what we're trying to feel feel into. Go ahead and release that foot. And slowly come on back up to your sphinx. And let's go to second side. Go ahead and reach back. Grab the other ankle. You may want to look the opposite direction. I'm just going to look this way, so hopefully you hear me when I talk. I really enjoy this stretch. It feels so good. But for you, it may feel very challenging. Every body is different. Notice where in your body you're tensing up and see if you can relax it. For me, I was just noticing that glute of the unbent leg was tensing up. And go ahead and let that foot go. And slowly turn onto your side and then come all the way onto your back. Actually, no. Let's do crocodile pose, full crocodile pose. Me. In which case, you take your elbows out to either side. One hand comes on top of the other. And your forehead comes down onto those hands. And we're just going to stay here for about a minute.
And last couple of breaths here. And again, coming up onto your elbows, slowly coming to one side and coming up into seated. If you have a bolster with you, I'm going to suggest that you go ahead and grab that now. Put it vertically on your bed, your mat, whatever you're working with. And so this is one variation I'm pretty sure I did not show. Turn so that your backside is to the bolster and it's just a little bit away from your hips. And again, you can start in Thunderbolt or Hero Pose. That's what I like to do. I'm going to take about maybe five breaths here. And then begin to walk your hands behind you and begin to really slowly lower your torso onto the bolster. And you may want to pause in between and just notice how it feels. Do you want to go further than this or do you want to stay right here? I'm going to slowly wall her all the way down and hands can be beside your leg. Hands can come up over your shoulders. And so you're getting a nice upper back stretch. Hands can be holding onto the soles of your feet. I like that a lot. They can even come out to either side and a T, whatever feels right to you today. If you need to come out of whatever saddle pose you've taken and take a brief moment in corpse pose, shavasana, or anything else that feels right to you, go ahead and do that. Maybe you get back into it, maybe you don't. Saddle pose can be very challenging for a lot of bodies. It's something to work up towards. Last couple of breaths here. Now there are a couple of ways to come at a saddle pose. One is to come back to your elbows, slightly contract your abs, your core to protect that low back and slowly walk yourself upright. For a lot of people that may not be accessible. So another way is to take your feet out to one side. I know it's very graceful. And then take the soles of your feet to, to your prop, your surface. And from there, you can roll over to one side, come back up to sitting. For now, I'm going to suggest that you move into a short shavasana. I'm moving my bolster over. Let's close your eyes. And scan your body slowly from your head, your neck, your shoulders, your upper back, your arms, your lower back, core, Upper legs, knees, lower legs, ankles, feet. 
Just notice how you feel, any sensations you may feel in your body. Maybe take your attention back to that intention you set at the beginning of this little mini practice. Invitation to continue relaxing in Shavasana for as long as you'd like. Otherwise, begin to allow your breath to deepen. Notice where your body meets whatever you are laying on. Feeling safe and held. Begin to take any small movements you need to wake up your body before beginning to move out into the rest of your day. Slowly coming into a seated position. And before we leave, I want to do one more thing before I send you out into the rest of your day. And come into butterfly pose. You can also be sitting cross-legged, although that's, or you can be sitting with your legs out in front of you. Um, I like to do this in butterfly pose. And we're going to strengthen our spleen meridian a little bit. It may help to increase your immunity, which is a great thing at this time of the year. So go ahead and start at your lower ribs and then come up the side of your ribs up to just below your armpits and then come down come out at your hips inside your feet inside your legs that is and off the big toe and then we're going to come back up the big toe in, up the inside of the legs out at the hips and come up the rib cage up to the armpits and then back down to where your ribs start then we're going to reach down again do that same thing up the inside of the feet and the legs out at the hips up the sides of your torso up to the armpits and then down to the bottom of the rib cage and one last time up the inside of the feet up the inside of the legs, moving slowly. Out at the hips, up the sides of the body, up to your armpits, and then down to where your rib cage, lower rib cage, and just go ahead and make little circles or tap in there. And don't be too, too gentle with yourself. We're just trying to stimulate our spleen meridian to get it working. It's like flushing pipes. So we're getting toxins out, maybe. <laughs> and then let that go. Inhale, bring the palms of your hands together in front of your heart. Close your eyes if it feels safe and comfortable to do so, slightly bending your head over your hands. May you be healthy. May you be happy. May you be free from pain and suffering. And may you be let go of the things that are no longer serving you. Let go easily. And begin to blink your eyes open, taking in the space around you, any noises you may hear. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this little add-on, a few extra saddle pose varieties. 
Um, and let me know, did you feel sensation? Where did you feel sensation? How about what I did at the end of this practice? Did you feel sensation there? Um, are you taking a little bit more calm energy out into the rest of your day? I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Have a wonderful rest of your day or evening. And oh, one last thing. When we're working with spleen and stomach meridians, um, that's the earth element. A great time to work with them is between 7 and 9 a.m. in the morning. Okay. Have a wonderful rest of your day or evening.